over. Hey, this is Andrew Lim inviting you to go out on a limb. So it's a really lovely spring day here in New York City and it's especially lovely because I think close to half of the New Yorkers are vaccinated, at least with the first shot. So this is really promising and because of that you actually see a lot of the restaurants getting packed again, which is great because I mean restaurant industry really needs this uh, rejuvenation of business. So in the spirit of supporting the restaurant industry, I'm actually going to uh, eat out today. So I'm gonna go check out Madame Passar for lunch, uh, which is a uh, Malaysian place uh, opened in the East Village sometime last year, late last year. And Madame Passar is actually uh, an actual place that exists in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, but of course, they take the name here and they uh, apparently dish up some of the most authentic Malaysian dishes. So we're gonna go do that and we're gonna go check out Sushi Amain or Amani. I think it's a main, which is a Michelin star restaurant, uh, sushi restaurant uh, in Midtown East. Apparently uh, it came highly recommended by my friend. So I'm gonna go uh, check out the Amikase today and see how it goes. So it's actually dining on two spectrums today. We have uh, super casual in the East Village and a little bit stuffy upscale in Midtown East. So come with me and we'll check out these two meals together. Hey folks, before we start, kindly hit the subscribe button and the notify button for new content that I upload weekly. Thank you. So guys, I'm at Madame Passar. I'm seated outside. This is apparently a self-service establishment, so I just moved my own tables to accommodate a party of three. Here comes my friend. And there's actually free music across the street to go with the dining, so it's perfect. So the glossy menu is kind of hard to read, but you have the uh, standard chicken rice dishes, you have the nasi lemak, which is the national dish of Malaysia, you have the roasted uh, chicken uh, wonton noodle as well, which is roasted chicken uh, repurposed. You have the salmon salad, which is a yisang that's usually reserved for Chinese New Year. You have Malaysian dishes like prawn noodles. Uh, you have popular side dishes like the prawn fritters as well, called chu chu udang, uh, wonton soup. Uh, you have the roja, which is a vegetable salad uh, in Malaysia, and the bobo cha cha, which is a popular coconut milk dessert. Hey, good morning. We just sat outside. Um, I want to ask you this. Uh, so basically, we order and we take it outside, right? Yes. Is this a BYOB? Can I bring yes. alcohol? We can go very sure. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Actually, this is more of a fast food joint because the food will all serve in takeout boxes. Uh, but the uh, go behind the counter was really nice because I missed the text message uh, notifying me that the food was ready. So she actually brought out the food for us. Uh, I ordered the uh, roasted uh, chicken with uh, dried wonton noodles or the lo mein, uh, the nasi lama, the prawn fritters or chushu udang, as well as the salmon salad, which is a, a usually reserved for Chinese New Year. Uh, but they have this year round so we just you know toss it in this little container for prosperity it's pretty good i mean uh, it's it's a uh, salmon salad it's all about crunchiness so it's pretty good i would say the noodle though on the other hand is actually pretty tasteless 
Um, the chicken itself, it's okay, but the noodle, I mean, it doesn't have that sweet soy sauce. The thing about the Malaysian wonton noodle is you usually need the sweet soy sauce, and this one had nothing of it, but the chicken was okay. Uh, the um, nasi lemak was actually good. The curry chicken uh, portion was really good. Uh, the rice was actually okay with the dried anchovies and the peanuts. So it's an average dish. Um, the uh, fruit and uh, vegetable salad uh, was really refreshing uh, with uh, ikamas in it. Uh, and of course, the prawn fritters was the highlight of the meal. <laughs> now that watch this on video again. <laughs> The bobo cha cha was honestly just okay. I mean, it has bits of uh, taro and sweet potatoes in it in a coconut milk, but I think the coconut milk was just way too sweet for my liking. There's only a seasonal omakase meal here uh, costing $150 and you have optional add-ons if it's not enough for you. A uh, good selection of sake here uh, by the glass, by the bottle. Uh, wine itself, I think by the glass there's only a selection of uh, white or champagne. Uh, there's no red, makes sense because it's all seafood. So this is a kind of fish from Hokkaido. It's called kinki in Japanese, or eat it fish in English. So on the right we have sea bream degree sushi, and the left we have king salmon. Right to left. All right, got it. Thank you. Great, thank you. And we finish it off with tuna hand roll, which is really crunchy because they have onion bits in it. It's really fresh and tasty. And we finish the meal with some miso soup, which is really tasty as well. Overall, I think the price tag of the omakase reflects uh, the quality of the fish that's all imported from Japan. It's really fresh, uh, but definitely on quantity, it's not that great because I kind of left hungry, uh, wanting more food. Uh, but it was a great experience. Ooh.